Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudev Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskritya Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chaiva Narottamam Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudiraya Tato Jaya Mudiraya Nasta Praeshu Vabhadreshu Nasta Praeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Nashtaki Bhakti Bhavati Nashtaki so we're going to see the verse today from 10th canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter 1, entitled The Advent of Lord Krishna, text number 4. Yeah, it will help if you can all see the verse on the screen. This is an important verse from Srimad Bhagavatam. You can all try to memorize the verse. Anyway, look, I think this is coming, but just wait for it to come. Nivrita Nivrita Tashe Tashe Upagiyamana Upagiyamana Bhavoshada Bhavoshada Chotra Chotra Mano Mano Viramat Viramat Ka Ka Uttama Shloka Uttama Shloka Gunanu Vadat Gunanu Vadat Puman, Puman, Virajeta, Virajeta, Vina, Vina, Pashupnat, Pashupnat, Nevrita Tarshe Rupagi Yamanat, Nevrita Tarshe Rupagi Yamanat, Babosha Dutch Chotra Manoval Badiramat. Bhava Ushadat Shotra Mano Viramar Uttama Shloka Kunanu Vadat Uttama Shloka Kunanu Vadat Puman Virajeta Vinapasugnat Puman Virajeta Vinapasugnat Nivrita Tarshe Rupagi Yamanat Nivrita Tarshe Rupagi Yamanat Bhavo Sadach 
ಪಶುಘ್ನಾ ಬಾವೋಷದೋತ್ರ ಮನೋಭಿರಾಮ ಕಾಮ ಶ್ಲೋಕಗುಣಾನುಭಾನ ಓಮನ್ ವಿರಚೇತವೀಲ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟೀಸ್ ಉಪಗೀಯಮಾನಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ಡ್ಸೈಬ್ಡ್ಸೈಬ್ಡ್ಸೈಬ್ಡ್ಸೈಬ್ಡ್ಸ
His divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Shura Prabhupada. Right. Right. In India, it is the practice among the general populace to hear about Krishna either from Bhagavad Gita or from Srimad Bhagavatam in order to gain relief from the disease of repeated birth and death. Although India is now fallen, when there is a message about the Supreme, when there is a message that someone will speak about Bhagavad Gita or Srimad Bhagavatam, thousands of people will gather still to hear that, that this verse indicates, however, that such recitation of Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam must be done by persons completely free from material desires, nivritta tashai. Everyone within the material world, beginning from Brahma down to the insig insignificant ant, is full of material desires for sense enjoyment. And everyone is busy in sense gratification. But when thus engaged, one cannot fully understand the value of Krishna Tata, either in the form of Bhagavad Gita or Srimad Bhagavatam. If we hear the glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead from Bhagavad, from, from it, 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 from liberated per persons, this hearing will certainly free us from the bondage of material activities. But hearing Srimad Bhagavatam spoken by a professional reciter cannot actually help us achieve liberation. Krishna Kata is very simple. In Bhagavad Gita it is said that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. As he himself explains, Mata Paratharam Nanyat Kinchit Asitanjaya. O Arjuna, there is no truth superior to me. Simply by understanding this fact that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one can become a liberated person. But especially in this age, because people are interested in because people are in, interested in hearing Bhagavad Gita from unscrupulous persons who depart from the presentation of Bhagavad Gita and distorted from for their personal satisfaction, they fall, they fail to derive the real benefit. There are big scholars, politicians, philosophers and scientists who speak on Bhagavad Gita in their own polluted way. And people in general hear from them being uninterested in hearing the glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead from a devotee. A devotee is one who has no other motive for reciting Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam than to serve the Lord. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has therefore advised us to hear the glories of the Lord from a realized person. Bhagavata Purodhiye Bhagavata Stani. Unless one is personally a realized soul in the science of Krishna consciousness, a neophyte should not approach him to hear about the Lord, for this will strict for this is strictly forbidden by Srila Sanatana Goswami, who quotes from the Padma Purana. 
Avaishnava Mukhokrinam Pudam Hari Katam Ritam Shravanam Naiva Kartavyam Sarvo Pochista Yata Haya One should avoid hearing from a person not situated in Vaishnava behavior. A Vaishnava is Nivrita Tasha, uh, is Nivrita Krishna. That is, he has no material purpose. For his only purpose is to preach Krishna consciousness. So-called scholars, philosophers, and politicians exploit the importance of Bhagavad Gita by distorting its meaning from their own, for their own purposes. Therefore, this verse warns that Krishna Kata should be recited by a person who is Nirvita Krishna. Sukadeva Goswami epitomizes the proper reciter for Srimad Bhagavatam and Parikshit Maharaj who purposefully left his kingdom and family prior to meeting death epitomizes the person fit to hear it. A qualified reciter of Srimad Bhagavatam gives the right medicine Babo Shadi for the conditioned soul. The Krishna consciousness movement is therefore trying to train qualified preachers to recite Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita throughout the entire world so that people in general in all parts of the world may take advantage of this movement and thus be relieved of the threefold miseries of material existence. This is a long purport. We will stop here for now. Maybe I will just speak and you can Om Jnana Timarangasya Jnana Shalakaya Satsuram-mili-tandena-tasmai-shri-guru-vena-maha-shri-chaitanya-mano-pishtam-sapitam-yena-bhutale-svayam-rupa-kadamayam-gadati-svapadam-tikam-vandeyam-shri-guru-sh
Sukadev Goswami that Jada Parikshit Maharaj, Ilay Parikshit Maharaj, Sukadev Goswami that Jada Parikshit Maharaj, Ilay Parikshit Maharaj, Sukadev Goswami that Jada Parikshit Maharaj, Ilay Parikshit Maharaj, Sukadev Goswami that Jada Parikshit Maharaj, Ilay Parikshit Maharaj, Sukadev Goswami that Jada Parikshit Maharaj, Ilay Parikshit Maharaj, Sukadev Goswami that Jada Parikshit Maharaj, Ilay Parikshit Maharaj, Sukadev Goswami that Jada Parikshit Maharaj, Ilay Parikshit Maharaj, Sukadev Goswami that Jada Parikshit Maharaj, Ilay Parikshit Maharaj, Sukadev Goswami that Jada Parikshit Maharaj, Ilay Parikshit Maharaj, Sukadev Goswami that Jada Parikshit Maharaj, Ilay Parikshit Maharaj, Sukadev Goswami that Jada Parikshit Maharaj, Ilay Parikshit Maharaj, Sukadev Goswami that Jada Parikshit Maharaj, Ilay Parikshit Maharaj, Sukadev Goswami that Jada Parikshit Maharaj, Ilay Parikshit Maharaj, Sukadev Goswami that Jada Parikshit Maharaj, Ilay Parikshit Maharaj, Sukadev Goswami that Jada Parikshit Maharaj, Ilay Parikshit Maharaj, Sukadev Goswami that Jada Parikshit Maharaj, Ilay Parikshit Maharaj, Develop the same mood, just as Maharaj Parikshit and Chukadeva Goswami. We have to develop their mood, their attitude. So we all have to develop the same mood, just as Chukadeva Goswami and Parikshit Maharaj Parikshit have to develop the same mood. They are fully absorbed in thought of Lord Krishna. They are fully absorbed in thought of Lord Krishna. They are fully Anxious to hear the topics of Krishna. They are very anxious to hear the topics of Krishna. They are very anxious to hear the topics of Krishna. They are very anxious to hear the topics of Krishna. They are very anxious to hear the topics of Krishna. They are very anxious to hear the topics of Krishna. They are very anxious to hear the topics of Krishna. They are very anxious to hear the topics of Krishna. They are very anxious to hear the topics of Krishna. They are very anxious to hear the topics of Krishna. They are very anxious to hear the topics of Krishna. Shri Vyasa Dev was instructed in the topics of the Lord by his spiritual master Shri Narada Muni. And Shri Vyasa Dev was instructed by his spiritual master Shri Narada Muni. And Narada Muni had heard the glorification of the Lord from his father, Lord Brahma. And Narada Muni was from his father, Lord Brahma, who heard the glorification of the Lord from his father. And the topics of the Lord were instructed. To Lord Brahma, by Lord Krishna Himself. And the topic of Krishna's teaching is by Krishna Himself, taught by Lord Brahma. So this is the system of the discipline succession, what we call parampara, the passing of the knowledge from the spiritual teacher to the disciple. This is what we call the parampara, is the transmission of the knowledge from the spiritual teacher to the disciple. This is what we call the parampara, is the transmission of the knowledge from the We hear, and then what we hear, then we repeat it to others. We pass it on. We listen. After we hear the content, we pass it on to others. We listen. After we hear the content, we pass it on to others. We listen. After we hear the content, we pass it on to others. We listen. After we hear the content, we pass it on to others. We listen. After we hear the content, we pass it on to others. We listen. After we hear the content, we pass it on to others. We listen. After we hear the content, we pass it on to others. We listen. After we hear the content, we pass it on to others. We listen. After we hear the content, we pass it on to others. We listen. After we hear the content, we pass it on to others. We listen. After we hear the content, we pass it on to others. We listen. After we hear the content, we pass it on to others. We listen. After we hear the content, we pass it on to others. We listen. After we hear the content, we pass it on to others. We listen. Shri Prabhupada is especially addressing the audiences in India because in India it is very common for people to come and speak on scriptures like Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. Shri Prabhupada is here in India to give the audience to speak on the scriptures like Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. Because in India there is a common thing that people come and speak on scriptures like Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. Shri Prabhupada is here in India to the devil God Swami came to speak to Maharaj Parikshit, who had only seven days left to live. So the devil God Swami came to speak to Maharaj Parikshit, who had only seven days left to live. So the devil God Swami came to speak to Maharaj Parikshit, who had only seven days left to live. So the devil God Swami came to speak to Maharaj Parikshit, who had only seven days left to live. So the devil God Swami came to speak to Maharaj Parikshit, who had only seven days left to live. So the devil God Swami They will call the gathering the Bhagavat Sapta. Sapta meaning seven days. They will call this meeting the Bhagavat Sapta. Sapta means seven days. So people think that the Lord God Swami spoke to Maharaj Parikshit for seven days. Maharaj Parikshit heard in seven days. After seven days. He was liberated. He went back to Godhead. So they think if I hear for seven days, I can also. Look at that Goswami. Some Parikshit, 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 So the answer that is written in the second chapter of the first chapter of Shri Mabhagavatam, Sutta Goswami saying, 
that we should hear the Srimad Bhagavatam constantly. We don't just come for seven days, hear Srimad Bhagavatam and then don't hear again. And often when we have these so-called gatherings of Bhagavat Sattva, they will simply rush to the tenth canto and they will speak about the pastimes of Lord Krishna with the cowherd girls of Vrindavan. Now that these pastimes of Lord Krishna and Vrindavan are very confidential, that's why they're not told until the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. You have to hear the Srimad Bhagavatam comes from the beginning. You don't just rush to the 10th canto, but you must hear from the very beginning. You have to understand the, the Lord fully. We have to hear about the Lord's, what is called His creative potency, or it's known as Shristi Tattva. How the Lord creates this phenomenal world, all the elements, all the living entities, the whole, how everything is created by Him. We have to understand how the Lord is not an, a person, an ordinary material person, but He is the eternal supreme personality of Godhead. So therefore, Srila Prabhupada said, going to hear about Lord Krishna, you must hear from someone who is the devotee of Krishna. And how and who is a devotee? Not just someone who puts on tea like, not just someone who comes and sings and dances occasionally in the temple. But the real devotee is Navritta Tarshaya, that they are completely purified of material desire. So that purification of heart has to come about through the process of devotion of service. This verse is describing that by hearing the glorification of the Lord, then this is the right medicine for all material disease. Material disease. You know, you can go to the pharmacy, they have a lot of different medicines for different diseases. But the real medicine for disease is the hearing the topics of Lord Krishna. We have to purify the heart of all the contamination, all the lust, all the greed, all the desires. We cannot give up desire, but we do have to purify desire. So the pure desire, those devotees with pure desires, they are simply desiring to hear about Krishna, discuss topics of Krishna, 
in the association of devotees. If we have to, if we hear the topics of Krishna from those who are not devotees, then it is very dangerous for our spiritual life. The example is given just like milk when it is touched by the lips of a serpent, it can have a poisonous effect. Milk is very nectarian substance to taste, to drink. The glass of milk is very refreshing and it's very nutritious. But if that milk has been touched by the serpent, then it will be like poison. So sometimes we hear from people, they say, Oh, what is the harm? They are chanting Hare Krishna, you are also chanting Hare Krishna. What is the difference? There's no difference, it's the same. They are also speaking about Krishna Lila, you are also speaking Krishna Lila, what's the difference? We have to understand there is a big difference between the devotee and the professional reciter of these things. There are people who are professional kirtaniers and professional speakers of scriptures. And they may have a lot of knowledge and they may be very good in the kirtan, their presentation of kirtan can be very nice, very attractive. But they have some other motive in their heart. Their motive is not simply to please Krishna. Their motive may be simply gross sense gratification. It may be that they have, they have the desire to accumulate wealth for their sense gratification. Or it may be that they desire impersonal liberation, entering into the one. Not everybody who chants Hare Krishna is a pure devotee. I remember one time I was in Vrindavan and we went to Govardhan to go around Parikrama, the Govardhan hill. It was the Ekadasi day, so there were more people circumambulating Govardhan that day. So I was walking around the Govardhan hill and somehow I was speak, I met this one man, he was a very nice man, friendly man. So I asked him, where are you from? And he said, I am coming from Jaipur. So I said, oh, you're from Jaipur, so far away. He said, yes. Very far. He said, every car is say, I always come to Govardhan and do Parikram. I said, wow, oh, you must be a great devotee. 
I said, you are a great devotee of Krishna. He said, yes, not only Krishna, I am devotee of all the gods. <laughs> so, I could understand it's not exactly like the devotees, like the Vaishnavas. And he's thinking all the gods are the same, all the gods are one. So, so Prabhupada in the purport today, he quoted the verse from the Bhagavad Gita which describes the mood of the actual devotee of Krishna. Very important verse in the Bhagavad Gita, the seventh chapter, I think it's verse number eight. Mata parataram nyanya tinted as the dananjaya. That Lord Krishna is saying, there is no truth superior to me. And then Lord Krishna goes on to give an example. He said, everything rests on me, just as pearls are strung on a thread. So Lord Krishna is giving this wonderful example about how he is sustaining everything in this world. Everything is resting on him, but you, you cannot see that it's all resting on him. Just like the beads are on the thread, but we don't see the thread, we only see the beads. So everything is resting on Krishna, but we don't see Krishna. So Lord Krishna said, there is no truth superior to me. This is only Lord Krishna saying like this. No other deva, no other personality ever says that there is no truth superior to me. So devotee, those who are the chaste devotee of Krishna, they understand Lord Krishna to be the highest truth. And they know that Lord Shiva, Lord Durga, Ganesh, there are so many other devas, 33 crore devas, they are also great personalities, but they are all under Lord Krishna. And the devotee will dedicate them their efforts, their energy, their time, their body, their mind, their words, all for the service of Lord Sri Krishna. And it, on this day, this Janmashtami day, where we make special efforts to glorify Lord Krishna. And how to glorify Krishna? By chanting His holy name and by speaking topics in connection with Lord Krishna. Srila Prabhupada, Prabhupada explains that although Krishna was personally present 5,000 years ago, He is present here today by His words. So the purpose of our Krishna consciousness movement to propagate the words which glorify Lord Sri Krishna. 
There are many other so-called spiritual movements, yoga society, meditation, many different organizations. And they may also be speaking Bhagavad Gita, they may also be chanting Hare Krishna. But what is their understanding of the Lord Krishna? They simply want, they're thinking all the gods are one, everybody is the same. Uh, they're thinking that ultimately the goal is simply to enjoy the material world and worship Krishna and he will give everything I want. We're thinking God is like our order supplier. You just tell him what we want and he will give. But those who are devotees, they don't want to take from Krishna, they want to give everything to Krishna. They think Krishna has already given me so much, I have not, how I can ask him for more? Krishna has given everything. Let me simply give to Krishna. And what can we have? What do we have to give to Krishna? Krishna is not hungry to get our flowers and fruits. We may be offering so many nice preparations to Krishna today, but in Goloka, in Krishna's home, in Krishna's abode, there are millions of goddesses of fortune there who are all serving Lord Krishna. And the flowers in the spiritual world are ever fresh and ever fragrant. And the flowers we have, they're good today, maybe tomorrow they'll still be all right after two days finish. But in the spiritual world, the flowers are pregnant forever. And they have flowers like the Parijaka flower, which is so attractive that the bees, they come from heaven, they will come all the way from heaven just to try to get that scent of the Parijaka flower. And there are fruits which are full of nectar and full of juice. Everything is fully digestible. I was reading the Back to Godhead article and they had an article about Shamsundar Prabhu who wrote a book about his his experiences with Srila Prabhupada. The book is called Chasing Rhinos with the Swamiji. So he was describing how Srila Prabhupada went one day to George Harrison's home in England, when George Harrison was living there in England, Prabhupada had gone to visit him in his home. He had a big, he had a very big, stately home. So Prabhupada was talking to George Harrison and he was telling him, he said, you know, because of Krishna, said, Krishna has given you so much money and he's given you so much fame and he's given you so much uh, 
beauty, everything you have, but being given to you by Krishna. But it's all temporary. And then Prabhupada went on to tell him about the spiritual world and how in the spiritual world everything is eternal. Not only is it eternal, but it's eternally blissful. It, it, there is no ignorance there. There is, there is no lamentation, there is no sorrow, there is no depression there. Everyone is eternally joyful in consciousness of Krishna. So Prabhupada was telling George Harrison about the nature of the spiritual world, the beauty, and how everything is so joyful. So George Harrison was listening, Prabhupada, this Prabhupada was telling him more and more about the spiritual world. And when, when Prabhupada finished, then George Harrison was just he was just amazed, you know, he was just stunned. So he turned to Prabhupada and he said, I'm going to call my real estate agent tomorrow. He said, I want him to find a big house for you, for your movement also in England. I want you to have a big place, he said. Just like my house, he said, I want you to get a big place. Prabhupada never asked him to give anything. Prabhupada just preached to him and told him about Krishna. And the effect of hearing about Krishna was that he wanted to serve Krishna. And in this way he purchased a beautiful big house which we still have today, which is called the Bhaktivedanta Man. And I know if you go there today on Janmashtami Day, there will be tens of thousands of people there. It, it's a, everybody goes, everybody knows, going to Bhaktivedanta Man. It's a very big festival. From all over England they will come to our country. So you can see how Krishna reciprocates, Krishna provides these things, facilities for the devotees. The devotees themselves, the devotees are satisfied themselves, they could sit under the tree and chant and be happy. But Krishna wants to have a big temple. And then the more people can come and see Krishna consciousness, see how Krishna consciousness can be practiced in such a big building, such a big environment, there's so much more opportunity for people to do service to Krishna. People become ordinary people, they are attracted to opulence, so they, they see the big temple, they, they want to come. 
普通人他们被赋予所吸引，他们看到大庙就会来。你说他爸爸曾经说过，如果我只是简单的坐在树下，没有人会过来亲我的。When so our duty is to also tell them, give them some knowledge about Krishna. Teach them about the chanting of the holy name and teach them also about Sri Prabhupada and who he was and how he established the Krishna consciousness movement. Then we have to also explain what about the deities, who are the deities here? Yeah, we have very wonderful deities here on the left. We have Nitai Gorangara. Nitai Gorangara was the name given by Shivajata Takaswami Maharaj when they installed the deities here. And of course, it's Gornitai, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Nityananda, but he gave the particular name Nitai Gorangara. And Radha Krishna Kanaya. Lord Balaram is Dauji. Dauji means a big brother. Kanaya means younger brother. So Radha Krishna Kanaya. And then on the right we have Lord Jagannath along with his brother and sister, Lord Balaram and Subhadra. So these deities are not always known by people. Yeah, we have to explain to them about the identity of these deities. Lord Jagannath is very popular in Arisa, in that part of India. But outside of Arisa and away from Bengal, then it's not so common. So we, we have a lot of preaching to do to explain to people about Krishna consciousness. We may feel, I, I don't, I'm not very qualified. We may think, oh, I'm not Nirvita Tasha. I'm not free from material lust, so how can I preach? We ask Prabhupada about this. We say, sure, Prabhupada, you know, I'm not pure, so maybe I, I'm not qualified to preach. But Prabhupada said, but if you repeat what you've heard from me, then that would, that is pure and that will take effect. So we simply hear, we can't we hear about Krishna from the te from our devotees, and the devotees they're hearing about Krishna from their teacher like Prabhupada, and we're repeating, and if we keep that purity, just repeating and repeating, then it will take effect, it will be perfect knowledge. I may not be pure, but what I am speaking is what I have heard from Prabhupada, and that is pure. 
you know, you say everyone can benefit, and you just, we hear carefully, repeat what we've had. We don't have to invent anything, we don't have to change anything. We just keep the parampara. And we will get the result, we can get free of birth and death. All right, so I will stop here to ask if there's any question. Any comment, any question? Anyone? also taking birth in the material world, right? So it means he, he's not a pure devotee. He, can, he takes his birth in this world, but he becomes a pure devotee by practice of devotional service. When Prabhupada quotes this, he's saying from Lord Brahma down to the end, he's paraphrasing from the Brahma Samhita. There's a verse in Brahma Samhita which describes this. Yes, Vendra Gopa Mata Vendra Maho Swakarma Bandhan Rupa Palapachanamma Punati Karmani Nirdahati Kintu Chabakti Bajam Govinda Madi Pursham Amaham Bajami Lord Brahma prayed that I worship Govinda the primeval Lord who burns up to the root all fruitive activities of those who are imbued with devotion. And he in the universe and the tiniest germ which bears the they're all suffering and enjoying according to their past activities. So you could say Lord Brahma is enjoying his position as the original, the first living entity in the universe, taking birth from the lotus flower. But he, he, he has a duty to perform and he's given the work of creating, creating the different bodies of the living entities. He has to situate also the planets in different positions in the universe. So he has service to do. And by that service, he becomes pure. 
It's described at the beginning of the universe. He had the two syllables, ta and pa, meaning that you should do austerity. So he wanted to understand the source where he would, where he had, where he had come from, but he got the instruction to do austerity. So he began to do austerity, and the result of his austerity, then he became empowered to do the creation, and he went on also to become devotee, to fully commit himself to the service of the Lord. Now, Brahma is not always a pure devotee. Brahma is a position, and there are many Brahmas. Brahma And so we know there is Brahma with many different heads. We are our Brahma, this, our universe is a small one, it's only four-headed Brahma. But not all the Brahmas are pure devotees, they don't all go back to God. But we're told the Brahma in this universe, he became a pure devotee. And he transmitted the knowledge of devotional service to his son, So Brahma is our Adi Guru, he is the original Guru in our Parampara. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, some um, there's another question there. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Okay. Um, may I know when a devotee declare as a pure uh, devotee, what is the qualification and value the person carries? What is the qualification of and, and value the person carry when he portrays as a pure devotee? Thank you. Well, no, Srila Prabhupada was asked one time, are there any other pure devotees to send you on the planet, Prabhupada? And Prabhupada said, oh, how many members do we have in our society? And he said, all the members of our society, they're all pure devotees. <laughs> 在这个星球上，除了您本人之外，还有其他的纯粹奉献者吗？说的爸爸就问旁身边的人，您的运动当中有多少成员？他说，我们运动当中的这些成员都是纯粹奉献者。Right, pure devotee means no sinful activities. 纯粹的奉献者的意思就是说没有罪恶的活动。So the members of the Krishna consciousness movement are all pure devotees. Because every day they're strictly following four regulated principles and they're chanting a minimum of 16 rounds every day. That is the standard of pure devotion. Of course, there are the higher pure devotees, you know. We have pure devotees like Prabhupada, we have pure devotees like Narada Muni, pure devotees like Brahma. So there are different levels of pure devotees. Just like this. Some devotees like the gopis of Braja, they are considered the very topmost devotees. 
But then other devotees are people like Nanda and Yashoda, Krishna's parents. Then you have Krishna's cowherd boyfriend, Subal and uh, Rishabha and Sudam, they're all cowherd boys, they're all very dear friends of Krishna, they're also pure devotees. And you have Krishna's servants, Daruta, Krishna's chariot driver, Arakta and Bhatra, Krishna's servants in Vrindavan, they're also pure devotees. So there are different kinds of pure devotees, different levels of pure devotees. There's pure devotees also in Shantaras, that means devotees like the four Kumaras, they're in Shantaras. They appreciate the opulence of the Lord, but they don't do any service. So they are also pure devotees. There are pure devotees who do sadhana bhakti. They are practicing devotional service at the level of sadhana, following the rules and regulations. There are pure devotees who are at the level of Bhava Bhakti. They are doing devotional service in ecstasy. And then there's pure devotees at the level of Prima Bhakti. They are at the level of love of God. So there are so there are many different levels of pure devotees. And we see all the members of this God as pure devotees. Hmm? Are you also pure devotee? Yes. You are? Yes. You are following the four principles. Yes, Maharaj. You're chanting every day? Yes. Okay, very good. Yes. Okay. All right, so we'll stop here. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Shura Prabhupada, Kiya. So, uh, the what is uh, we're going to have a tour for Siddha Prabhupada's art gallery. Uh, the lift uh, going to the next floor is uh, small, only for six people. So we don't want to use too much the leaf, we're going to walk the third pace of the time. So you just follow Siva Chaitanya Prabhu, we're going by the third pace. And he will give us some explanation well of the I gathered the Siddha Prabhupada. And remember that after the tour, we all go into the auditorium for our rehearsing. Thank you.